Welcome back to r slash legal advice where people ask questions, get advice and we get satisfaction. If you are new to my channel please don't forget to subscribe to join our amazing community and without any further ado let's dive right into the stories. And the first one is titled Property Damage by Drunk Driver, his insurance company says he is not injured by them, Sheriff says he is. Hi guys, I live in New York, I'm having a heck of a time. Three weeks ago, a man drove into some trees on my property and his SUV burned a few of my trees. An arborist said two of them are definitely dead and two more may be dead. My homeowner's insurance offered me $500 for the two trees saying that is the maximum my policy allows. These trees will cost much more than that to cut slash replace. That leaves me with trying to go after his insurance but they claim he's not injured by them and never had an auto policy with them. I escalated the claim and the agent support said the same thing. They searched all over for his name and came up with nothing. The sheriff assures me he did have auto insurance, all state NYS insurance code 743 and that he was covered at the time of the accident. I have checked for a similar company name called the Allstate number on the NYS insurance website and the deputy also gave me a number to call which was the same I had been calling. It is definitely the right insurance company that I've been contacting. The man is still in the hospital, he was burned very badly before we managed to get him out of the car. What do I need to do here? Everything I try turns up a dead end. I've never had to use a lawyer for anything other than a home purchase before. I don't know what to do. And a user in the comments said, sue the driver. If he had insurance they will pay or be faced with a bad faith denial claim. If he didn't then you can collect from him personally. And another person said, yep, get your homeowner's insurance involved and sue the driver to get his insurer out of the woodwork. And guys if you would be in this situation what would you do in regards to the driver? Would you try to sue the driver to get the insurance to come out? Let us know in the comments. Update to the drunk driver story. As the title states the sheriff is being unhelpful. I asked for a different sheriff but they said they cannot do that since he's the one that filed the report. He works overnight so communication is difficult. His insurance is Allstate. I even tried calling eSurance as a long shot since they are owned by Allstate but no luck. I have an itemized damage report from a tree company for 9300 in damages that exceeds the small claims $5000 in my area. I have the driver's contact info, can I talk to him or his wife if he's still in the hospital to ask for his insurance info? And a user in the comments said, yes you can reach out to the driver or his wife. They are not obligated to answer you though and based on the injuries I would not be surprised if they feel they have more important things on their plate. If you cannot get an answer your next step is to file suit against the driver. You are over the limit for small claims court in NY so you likely need to consult a lawyer. And another update to the drunk driver story. I pleaded to the sheriff one last time through voicemail as he works overnight telling him I am at my wits end asking if I can talk to the driver's wife for insurance info etc. He sent another officer over to the driver's house, got his policy number, claim number, insurance agent's name, everything and gave it to me. I called up the insurance company again and magically they found him. All of his info was exactly as I stated it was when I called in 5 plus times. I don't know why they couldn't find him before, his wife started the claim the day after the accident. After finally getting everything going the insurance paid out without any trouble. I know you guys love tree costs, here was the breakdown. It was to replace 3 trees, not removal. Two 6 inch DBH honey locusts, $1850 each and one 6 to 8 inch DBH Norway spruces, $1520 each included labor to plant. The guy is okay as far as I know. And a user in the comments said $7070 for people who don't like adding. And another person said 5220 only 3 trees total not 3 of the first type listed. 
And then another disappointed user said, that is not nearly as much as this subreddit led me to believe trees are worth. I feel like people are always saying full grown trees like the ones in the original post are worth 10 to 50 thousand dollars each. Well guys and I guess some trees are worth that much but obviously not every tree. But either way, if you enjoy tree law stories and in general if you like my content, please don't forget to like the video and post some star emojis in the comments to show me that you are a true ripe star. Thank you very much for the support, it is very much appreciated and now let's move on to the next story. And the next one is titled, Neighbor reports my car to be towed every day despite having a permit. I recently came back from college and I could not get a parking decal from my property manager's office since they are closed, I live in Fort Lauderdale. However, I was able to get into contact with someone and was given an online permit to prove that my car can legally park there. This is an official permit that I paid for, doesn't expire until July 1st. However, my car gets towed every 2am and I have to pay the driver $60 every morning despite showing him my decal. He says although the decal is official, the head of my HOA who lives in my neighborhood keeps reporting my car to get it towed once he gets the order, I have to pay him to get my car back. As much as I hate to be this person, I am the only black person in my community and he has made it clear that he doesn't like my family living there and had always given us a hard time since he moved in 3 years ago, my family has lived here for over 23 years, is there anything I can legally do about this? Edit, thanks for all the help everyone, I have no idea how to contact the HOA or the property manager as my mother deals with them and every time the car was getting towed except the last time, she was the one to catch them and pay. I will be contacting the HOA with her when she gets home and will try and contact the property manager. My neighbor is a dick and I will also be speaking to him personally when I get home, if legal action needs to be taken, we will definitely do so, thank you. Edit, I talked to the property manager and they said they rescinded my permit, I asked them why and they said that they are not doing those anymore, I told them they never gave me any indication of that and they said they did not plan on giving me any notice. Final update, thank you everyone, I honestly could not have expected to get this much help. As of what happens next, we plan on taking legal action mainly to get our money back and because it seems that what may have happened with the permits was not strictly legal. I still need to talk personally with the HOA guy who conveniently does not answer his door when I knock but he has two big ass dogs and will have to walk them eventually, it seems HOA tend to suck especially in southern Florida. Thank you. And a user in the comments said, in regards to, I talked to the property manager and they said they rescinded my permit, this person said, yeah, that's not how that works. You've got a permit until July 1st, you paid for that and the company slash HOA agreed to it. After July 1st they can choose not to renew it if it is not a service they offer anymore, however you have already paid for and received your permit. They are free to negotiate a deal with you, in other words cancel parking privileges in exchange for a refund and you are free to tell them to pound sand but they are absolutely not free to just rescind it without notice and start towing you. And another guy said, read through the comments to glean your response, first thing is that the HOA must, and in writing, authorize the tow of a vehicle parked on the property without permission if a sign is posted. The authorization must be made in writing, if the tow truck driver doesn't have this on him when the car is hooked up, it is theft. Additionally, any rebate from the towing company to the property owner or agent is prohibited as per Broward County rules. Number 1. If you have a permit and the tow truck driver is attached to the car, it is theft. Call the police and get a police report for every instance. If the tow truck driver passes the blame to the head of the HOA and have the HOA guy charged as well, but most importantly, press for charges on the tow truck driver as a person. The tow truck driver will talk to his people and his associates in the industry. Make sure he understands he is stealing the vehicle under the excuse the HOA wants it. The permit implies permission and with that he cannot lawfully take the car. 
Number 3. Reach out to all board of the HOA members and explain the he has made it clear that he doesn't like my family living there and had always given us a hard time since he moved in 3 years ago with a video recorder in their face. And then mention that the federal courts in Reeves vs. Carrollsburg found that the condo or HOA could not sit idly by while one of its owners was being attacked on the basis of her race. This means the association cannot ignore the problem. Number 4. While you are chatting with the HOA, make sure it is understood that if the head of the HOA is going to continue with his harassing or retaliatory behaviors, the HOA will be liable as he is acting as and for the HOA. Number 5. Get an attorney and have them take the HOA and tow company to court for illegally towing your car. And guys, unfortunately, there's no further update to this story. However, I did contact the OP to get at least a little bit of an update. So I asked, I'm wondering, did you pursue legal action and if so, did you get your money back? And the OP was very kind and answered, hello and yes, we got our money back from this and ending up arbitrating actually. So yeah guys, that's all I got for updates this time. Not the most detailed update let's say, but that is how the story ends. I hope you don't mind. And the next one is titled, Apartment Complex removed property from my apartment and changed the locks over a month before my lease termination is done in DeKalb County, Georgia. I want to be done, is this grounds for terminating my lease early? We had two months left on our lease, they wanted three months rent to cancel early so obviously we are not going to pay extra to cancel early and instead gave our notice that we were not renewing so we could keep the apartment for the next two months as extra storage and to hang out in every now and then, because I work close by. We moved most of our stuff out of the apartment but left a few things that we needed to clean it, most importantly a relatively expensive vacuum cleaner. In between the time that we moved most of our stuff out, 3 weeks ago and yesterday, they entered the property, changed the lock, took the vacuum cleaner and took apart parts of the stove, all without any warning or notice. My wife drove over an hour out of her way to get the vacuum cleaner only to be locked out of the apartment after the housing office had closed. I drove there the next day to figure out what happened, they said, oops, we thought you left, and unlocked it to let me in. When I got in, the vacuum cleaner was gone and the stove had been taken apart for cleaning. I have reread the lease agreement and I don't meet any of their requirements for being in default or abandonment. All I want to do is terminate the lease and clean my hands of this problem. The management company has been rude to us, slow on maintenance and just overall an unreasonable hassle to work with and we just wanna be done. Terminating the lease would at the very least save us from paying half of October's rent, $1680 a month, $700 for the part of October that we would still owe and probably 150 bucks or so in utilities. But hopefully, since they violated their part of the lease, I would be able to get September's rent back as well. So, what can we do? Edit, thank you all for such helpful replies. I'm writing a letter to hand into management. I will probably post it here first to have an extra pair of eyes glance over it. And a user in the comments said, full stop, this was an illegal eviction, they have completely screwed themselves. You can take them to court and win monetary damages beyond your stolen property and the rent paid. Don't negotiate with them until you understand what you are entitled to. This website might have some helpful information for you, filing in small claims is very straightforward and you should not need a lawyer. And a user in the comments said, do you want the vacuum cleaner back too? Not a GA attorney, but you could probably not pay October and request September back or put a stop payment if by check that hasn't been cashed. If they fight you over it, explain that if you are required to pay rent, that means that you have possession of the property and their actions would be criminal in nature. AKA theft, breaking and entering and possibly a bunch of civil tenant law violations. That might get them to back down, they probably don't have a leg to stand on regarding September rent but it may still be difficult to get it back from them. And guys I'm wondering, have you ever had to deal with an illegal eviction in your life? If you ever experience something like this, please let us know in the comments, if you wish to share, because I would really be interested in hearing what happened. Update to the apartment in Georgia removed property story. 
Great news everyone, after receiving my letter and talking with their attorneys, the apartment complex completely admitted fault, admitted to the damages and actually ended up paying us more than we asked for, in addition to waiving the end of lease walk through and just giving us our deposit back. I wrote to them, the yellow highlights are things I redacted for privacy's sake, the only context you need is that section 10.5 of the lease agreement states that the apartment complex is not liable for any of my losses unless it is due to negligence on their part. They are paying us the equivalent of almost $3000 and I definitely owe you guys thanks for the advice and guidance from the initial post. Thanks so much, you guys really helped us out. And the next one is titled, Guy claiming I hit his mirror wants me to pay almost $500 to have his entire mirror replaced. I was driving down a fairly narrow street when I realized there was a commotion going on behind me, I stopped my vehicle in the best place possible, got out and was informed by someone that I had hit a driver's vehicle. This group of guys apparently knew the gentleman very well and one went into a local pub to get him. Upon looking at his vehicle and the damage I had apparently caused, I could see the only damage was that the mirror had fallen out on his vehicle and my vehicle remained mark free. I told him that he can file a claim with my insurance company or he can get me a quote for fixing the mirror and I would help pay for it. He says he does not want to go through insurance so he tells me he will get a quote and let me know. Well, I got the quote from him and it is not to fix the mirror, but completely replace the entire mirror. I called up the company he said he got the estimate from and this is how it breaks down. Refinish left front door molding, replace left front door power mirror assembly, refinish left front door mirror, remove and install left front door trim panel, clear coat, tint color, paint slash materials, hazardous waste disposal. I had only originally agreed to repair the mirror as the only damage was the mirror had fallen out. The mirror itself was still intact, there were no cracks or any kind of other damage to the mirror other than the glue appeared to not have been able to hold the mirror in. He has been sending me messages constantly about when he's going to get his payment but I don't think that it is reasonable that he's asking me to pay almost 500 bucks to get all this work done. He is welcome to make a claim against me, but he chose not to. Am I legally obligated to pay this exorbitant fee? And a user in the comments asked, so is there no damage to your car? It sounds like kind of a scam where a bunch of buddies work together to get boost money, take pictures of the area that it could have hit and tell him to claim with your insurance. I have been in a vehicle where the driver clipped a mirror, it is loud so you should have heard it. And another person suggested, you go ahead and file the claim, let your insurance deal with it, that's why you have insurance. And another person agreed, exactly this. I once hit another car's mirror to mirror years ago in a similar situation, the woman who was driving that car claimed I caused other damage including scrapes along the rear quarter panel etc that her car already had. It was painfully obvious that there was no corresponding damage to my vehicle, there was no damage to my car other than that one mirror scratch on the mirror so I didn't file a claim for it. But I did notify my insurance since it was a pretty sure bet that they would hear from her insurance company. And sure enough she put in a claim with her insurance for all the damage and my insurance denied it after confirming with me and sending somebody to take a look at my car. I never heard anything again regarding that claim after they looked at my car. And guys I forgot to ask, have you ever tried to scam your own insurance company? No I'm just kidding of course, but that reminds me I have recently read a news article here in my city in northern Thailand that there is sort of a group of guys who usually drive on the highway at midnight and they try to make you hit their car. They will then essentially extort you for money even though their car is an absolute wreck already. Anyway, this one is another update to the mirror story. After hearing what everyone had to say, I told the gentleman to go through my insurance and I called up my insurance company to let them know I don't think this is a legitimate claim as my car has no damage. The only damage to my vehicle is from an incident from a while ago that they are aware of. Today however I received a phone call from the collision repair shop telling me he was in the shop and wanting me to pay for his repairs. 
I promptly told the woman he can go through my insurance as I am not paying almost 500 bucks out of pocket for this repair. She thanked me and that was the end of the conversation. This only further makes me think that this was a scam. Why would he get the company to call me up for this repair and demand payment? Especially a company nowhere near his place of residence. Upon further investigation into the individual it appears he has had some legal woes in the past on top of which his address is not registered to him. When I called the number a gentleman by a different name answered. Edit, I should mention his legal woes include harassment, threats and having to pay $250,000 when he attempted to sue an entire city so 500 bucks is probably a really nice bonus to get when you have that kind of money to repay. My insurance company just told me they will contact me when a claim is made against me, all they can really do for now is wait. I have a feeling no claim will be made. And indeed guys, in regards to this story I did some further research and apparently no further claim was made according to the OP. So therefore I would say OP dodged a little scam bullet. And the last one has nothing to do with legal advice but it is a little bonus story by the always beloved Mama-san from our own subreddit and it is titled Navy Brats vs the Military Police. Nearly half a century ago, oh I'm old, my father was stationed on an island in the Pacific. The locals had a thriving business selling fireworks to the Navy Brats, however fireworks were banned on base. Boys returning to the base would not only have their bags checked but would be pat down and all fireworks confiscated. Girls never got pat down. My brother took advantage of this, he is the one who started me on my diva hood. He dressed me in cute outfits with little sweaters so he could hide fireworks inside the sweater and my pockets. He even had me carry purses for them to check, this went on for months and I have no idea how much I smuggled into the base. Now we kids had to hide the contraband where no grown up could find it. Now all runways, be they civilian or military, have buffer fields to protect in case of crash. The base had a giant bamboo field. Over nearly a year we had made paths in there like we were a pack of mice chewing through bread. The field had a small rise at the front next to the road. We had dug out a small fort there that was built with scavenged wood. Whenever they came after us we would go hide in the bamboo field like rats fleeing a sinking ship. The military police tried for months to ferret us out of that field with no success. Once a year the buffer field would be burned to prevent fire hazard, the base would tell the families a week in advance of the burning, when we knew the day they planned to burn we moved the fireworks to the base trash dumpsters. This year they did not tell the families, the controlled burn was started after we kids left on the bus for the American school of base. We returned to the base to see smoke from the field and our fireworks going off. Also the military police smirking at us evilly as we drove past. The military police won, Navy Brad zero. And guys unfortunately we have already reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories and if you haven't already please also go to patreon.com slash ripe youtube where I upload exclusive reddit videos starting at just three dollars a month. This is a great way to support me in case you are interested and the chance for me to become independent from youtube revenue. Thank you so much for watching, please don't forget to subscribe and like the video and I hope to see you again tomorrow.